the reasons, particularly for this peachland watershed, was that it was really an important, and still is really an important site for our people throughout the Okanagan Seal communities. I came here as a child with my family, and I know that uh, part of my role in the cluster is to try to bring understanding to what those values are. The purpose of this cluster is to bring professors, you know, experts, and uh, students together. You know, and they are from different you know, disciplines you know, to work together to, you know, to take a like, watershed-based approach. But that's our important purpose. And I feel like uh, our ultimate objective is to advance watershed science and to promote integrated governance for managed watershed ecosystems. When indigenous peoples have rights in a watershed, as is the case here with seal communities, but the, um, the province does not recognize their rights when it comes to how they manage the water in terms of legislative authorities. So then it's up to a governance model to accommodate the indigenous rights. For thousands of generations, we looked after this place and nobody from the, any of the governments ever consulted with our uh, communities. So it's not the feds and the province and the municipality of Peachland making all the decisions and consulting with indigenous nations amongst the many other stakeholders. The indigenous nations are at the table with the other levels of government and they're working together. And then the rest of us all work, all the other interest groups work under that group of government authorities, right? That is, for me, a real reason to be engaged in this cluster, which is looking at different ways of uh, engagement of people managing and in caretaking this watershed and this, this creek here. Yeah, collaboration is key. And there are so many partners collaborating. It's really remarkable. Um, but it's collaborating at the proper scale. So ecosystems and watersheds do not know boundaries. They don't know political boundaries. They don't know organizational jurisdictions. They don't understand legislation. They don't speak that language. So it's um, bringing it to a scale that matters to the ecosystem level and on a watershed scale. That's the innovative piece. And it's actually the most complex and most challenging piece. If this was easy, it would be done many years ago. So it's very challenging to work together. And that's why um, collaboration is really the key with this initiative working with our community partners. It's, it's a two-way exchange of knowledge from the community and our, and our research teams. My role is to contribute a scientific perspective that looks at landscapes and watersheds in particular as complex interconnected human environment systems. And so I will be contributing helping the cluster move forward with developing new models and new ways of thinking about watersheds as systems. My contribution to the project and what we'll be working on will be developing an integrated modeling framework that brings together a lot of the scientific and indigenous knowledge about the watershed into a single platform. So an integrated model, what we're trying to do is take a look at all of these very diverse perspectives. We're layering the ecological components with these human values that we care about to try and understand that system from a holistic perspective. My research is primarily focusing on how the humanly induced impacts or the climate change cumulatively affect the downstream water availability, quality, and the quantity of the water. And we are living in a, in a region where water availability is the lowest per capita in Canada. So with this research, we're looking at cumulative effects of disturbances in the headwaters and how that's affecting everything downstream. In terms of hydrology, 
the disturbances that are happening in Upper Peachland Creek is going to be affecting the water that's in the stream down here. It's going to be affecting the water, the habitat for the salmon as they come in to spawn. It can change your stream temperatures, which are important for spawning. It can change your water quality um, and the low flows as well. All of these aspects are really quite important for the kokanee salmon. I think that salmon are an extremely culturally important aspect of for not only for First Nations people, just but just for Canadian identity. So I think that the learnings that we can get from this project can hopefully be applied to other streams, although this is a very specific ecosystem that we're working with. Hopefully we can make some sense of the data and apply these to other streams and help to save the salmon. Wildfires impact hydrology, our air quality, um, their habitat and biodiversity. There are so many significant interconnected pieces in the ecosystem that we all have to consider. So having that dialogue collectively right now, especially in the face of uh, changing climate, is critical. We can definitely protect our environment in, in terms of the sustainability for the future generations. At the end of this project, we hope that we can transform the way that watersheds are managed in British Columbia and internationally to provide an approach that is more integrated, that considers the human and ecological interactions in a more comprehensive way, and that provides a framework for moving forward in which we don't divide up watershed management by sector and instead consider the interconnections between forestry, between biodiversity, water, salmon specifically, and all of the other components that are happening in a watershed. For me, the people in the water cluster, this research cluster really represent a diversity that's needed, a diversity of voice. And cluster itself really represents a, a whole system view and a whole system voice that be a good model, I think, for the future.